<clears throat> Heavenly Father, I thank you for uh, a chance to come together today to worship your name, to um, to lift up your praises. Uh, Lord, uh, even in just the simple conversation, the simple study uh, of your word and in the fellowship of, of your 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 disciples, Lord, that your name can be lifted up and, and worship can uh, engulf the uh, the throne room of heaven. What a, what a joy it is to know that we get to be part of that. Lord, I pray that you would help to guide our conversation and our, our study tonight, that we would be uh, um, challenged to remember to worship you well and to bring glory to your name and uh, serve your kingdom. I pray that you would help us to uh, look into your word to, to know the truth of how we should conduct ourselves. I pray, Lord, that you would um, be with these requests that we've uh, mentioned here this evening uh, for uh, Felicia and Shelby as they travel, um, for uh, uh, Katie Bowman as, as she continues in her recovery, uh, and, and Wade Taylor as he continues in his recovery. Uh, I pray also for uh, for Shelby with her uh, job opportunities and, and how you're leading her. I thank you that you're speaking to her in a clear way, and I uh, pray that you would uh, uh, find um, that she would find glory in uh, praising your name, uh, listening to your to your leading. Lord, I, I thank you for the Sawyers and and uh, um, for their family uh, going through the, this uh, situation. We lift them up that you would give them comfort and, and grace. Um, you know, we've seen how um, this pandemic has affected so many uh, families and. Uh, communities, uh, nations even, Lord, uh, the, just the entire world, and, and, and it seems so big sometimes, but then it hits home like this where where um, we're separated, we we're not able to, to uh, grieve in, in the normal kind of ways. Lord, I pray that you would just uh, give them grace and peace during this time. I pray for Barbara as, as she grieves the loss of her husband. Uh, Lord, I pray for family members to surround her with, with hope and love and, and, and comfort in these days ahead. And I pray that your son, Jesus, would be uh, the Prince of Peace in her life. Uh, and I, I, I lift them up to you that uh, even through a situation like this, that you might even still find uh, a way to glorify yourself. And I pray that these things would be true according to the name of your son, Jesus, uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, friends, I, I, I want to um, spend just a, just a moment uh, kind of review, reviewing what we talked about last week with, with um, the, the, the idea of prayer. Uh, you know, did had, did anybody get a chance to, to maybe use one of those uh, prayer targets or one of those prayer charts? Is that something that maybe you uh, can kind of give a testimony to that, that you uh, uh, put that into practice this week? Or Everybody's on mute now. Remember that those are just tools that you can use. There's, there's all kinds of different things that will help us along with uh, – um, with our, our, our willingness and our, our uh, ability to pray. Um, uh, you know, I think that uh, when we talk about the discipline, the spiritual discipline of prayer, um, we, we think about, uh, you know, I think everybody knows how to offer one of those, you know, in the moment kind of prayers and, and, and speak, speak to those things. Um, Lord, I, I, uh, you know, where we, we say, Lord, help us in this, or Lord, there's this, this pressing situation and, and we offer those up, but then sometimes we sit down, uh, to maybe study the word or to, to commune with God. And then we, um, um, uh, we, we have a hard time thinking, you know, trying to collect our thoughts, you know, sometimes in the quietness of our own mind, our, our, we'll find it racing. And so using tools like that can be helpful to, to guide us. Um, you know, uh, prayer is, 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 is a muscle that you have to continually build and continue to work at. Um, and so just, to, just something to encourage us in that, um, you know, uh, if we don't, maybe don't feel like our prayer is, is the best that we can, we can know that God is, uh, is, in, um, uh, is in the business of helping us learn how to, to continue to know how to pray. Um, and uh, just like uh, our uh, conversations with friends get more sweet over time the more we do it or the uh, relationship with our spouse gets more intimate the the more that we um, communicate with them in the same way uh, it's true uh, of us being able to speak with God and communicate with him that the more that we do it the more that we grow so um, I wanted to uh, let's see here give me just a second I wanted to talk about our our Bible study this morning or, or this evening we're going to talk about, um, if it will click on here, there it goes. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, 
Come on now. There it is. All right. Heavily, everybody can see that, I hope. Christ Christianity 101, the basics of discipleship. Of course, uh, as usual, the uh, document to follow along with is right there in the um, uh, on the, our church website. Um, you can download a copy of your, for yourself as you review it later. And there's also questions for your own reflection, your own Bible studies you go on. Um, but we're going to talk about worship um, as a spiritual discipline. And um, if I was going to ask, would anybody be willing to unmute themselves and maybe give me a definition of worship, what you think worship is, or maybe even what it, what it isn't? I think that sometimes we uh, associate worship when we say it. We associate it with music or singing, you know, um, maybe some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, or Baptist, but dancing or, or movement, you know, that uh, um, we see, uh, you know, some of these other uh, religions, uh, other faiths that will, you know, they see worship as doing something, right? That there, there's maybe an altar that they've, they've, um, uh, erected and and then they they bow down to it they prostrate themselves they you know arrange different things it's it's some sort of action some sort of active thing that they're doing trying to engage whatever deity that they're trying to pray to or whatnot and and i think that sometimes in in christian life uh you know especially when we look at like the ten commandments and those kind of things where god says you should only worship him and that you shouldn't bow down to idols and and those kind of things that we kind of Sometimes we get a little, uh, I don't know what the right word is, uh, kerfuffled maybe about how we're supposed to worship or what worship really is. And so we think of it as, as some sort of act that we're supposed to do. Um, um, uh, and and then it's like that's why sometimes it only gets relegated to maybe the spoken word or a sung song or maybe some sort of movement that would bring glory to God or or something like that. And, um, you know, obviously we can worship while we're singing. We can worship while we're making some sort of, you know, reciting a poem or, you know, reading the, the scripture or, or, or maybe doing some sort of, you know, rhythmic movement or whatever it might be. But really, I, I want us to think about this, that, that worship is really, it's focusing on and responding to God. That it, it's very base level that worship is focusing on and responding to God. Um, you know, uh, we sometimes forget that, you know, the, the amount of money we spend to, um, uh, and, and I'm, I'm just as guilty, so I, I'm hoping I'm not stepping on everybody's toes because I'm stepping on mine too. Uh, the amount of money that we spend to support our favorite, you know, ball team, you know, to buy their merchandise, their logo, and the, uh, the amount of time that we'll commit to uh, watching a game or going to attend and the money we'll spend to go and watch that or, or the amount of time we'll spend to, to discuss the biggest play from the last night's game or, or to, to, to prognosticate about how they're going to look this season and, and, and all of that time and energy and resources is in its base form a, a, a kind of worship that we give towards that, you know, in, in, inanimate object, the, the baseball team or the football team or whatever it is. Now, we don't always call it that where we just say it's interest or it's, you know, it's a hobby or it's, it's some sort of, you know, thought to it or whatnot. But when we think about what worship truly is, anything that we give our attention to is something that we are showing worship worship uh, of, and and I I mean that seriously because um, when we read in Scripture that God the way that He has laid it out that when He created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden, uh, He created a uh, a relationship with them where they would be focused on Him and that He would be able to respond to them and and, and communicate and they would have that given take that back and forth where they would know him and they would follow him. And so um, I think that it's, it's important for us to remember that at its very base level, worship is that attention, that focusing on, that response that we give. 
And so sometimes we struggle with worshiping God because our attention is spread so far and wide. And so uh, at the very base level, worship is focusing on and responding to God. Now, saying that worship is the duty and the privilege of all people, okay? That, um, you know, they say sometimes people are multitaskers, right? That, that they can do two, more than two things at once. And really, they're not, not, that usually doesn't happen, right? Some people might be able to keep that up for a, for a short period of time. But really, what's happening is they're, they're switching between those tasks, you know, as easily as possible. What we find that is that our attention span is very finite, right? And so we only have so much of it. And so, like, every single person, the amount of attention that they have is very finite. And so we all, every single person, whether they worship God or a false God of some sort or not, um, they're worshiping something. They're giving their attention to something, some person, some idea, and so it's a duty and a privilege of all people, but more so than that, it really should be a duty and a privilege for us because the object of our worship should be God, um, that we should have a higher calling in that duty and privilege that we have to only give our attention to something, and that should be God himself. And so uh, we can learn this spiritual uh, discipline of worship, and as we learn it, as we refine it, as we build ourselves in it, we're going to see how we're going to be more like Jesus, and we're going to be able to understand the depth because we're going to be focusing on it uh, in the same way that maybe some, you know, a student might uh, look at his study guide or his study notes to prepare for the test. You know, he's he's almost in a, in a sense worshiping those notes because they have all of the information that he needs to complete the task of you know passing the test that he's about to do. And so uh, the student will read over it and she'll look at it frontwards, backwards, and she'll memorize it. She'll apply it to her heart. Uh, the student will look at it and he'll try to understand all the little intricacies so that when he steps in and finds those questions and whether they be fill in the blank or uh, multiple choice or whatever, that, that, that he can recall that information and, and, and be able to do that. So in the same kind of way, we see worship as that trying to, you know, focus on what, what God is showing us, um, looking at what he's doing and uh, reminding us that, uh, that, that uh, of how he is the the, the object of of our desire um, or how he should be the object of the desire but we find that even Jesus reminds us uh, he's quoting the the prophets here that the the people um, the people of Israel honor him with their lips but their heart is far away from God in vain they worship me teaching as doctrines the commandments of men Right. And so uh, being accused that uh, um, the, the, the people um, that were supposed to be most faithful are, are being accused of not showing right worship to God. Instead, they're putting their own thoughts, they're putting their own ideas, they're putting their own emphasis in there. And so if we come to the understanding that worship really comes down to focusing on and responding to God, I think that we need we will see um, how we need to change our lives so that we might be built up and why we might be prepared, we might be ready uh, for the purpose of godliness to imitate God, to imitate His Son, and to be filled with the Spirit. So, all of that to say that I, there's I think uh, the the uh, uh, the book that we're going through kind of highlights how worship is, is found in four different ways. The first thing is worship is focusing on and responding to God. Now, I just spent a lot of time belaboring that, um, and so I, I won't spend too much more on that. But just as a, as a reminder that we put our attention on who God is and responding to him. And so uh, it starts with the idea that God alone is worthy of our worship. No matter how good our favorite ball team is, no matter how important this next test is that we're supposed to take, no matter how important our family or our children are, that God alone is worthy of our utmost attention. He is the one that is worthy of the relationship that we would have with him. Uh, the Revelation uh, chapter 4 
reminds us uh, as as the angels are crying out and then the the, the people are bowing down to God those that it, John gets that glimpse of heaven and 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 everybody's saying to God worthy are you our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you are the one that created all things and by your will they existed and were created so that football team doesn't exist except for by the grace of God the knowledge to complete that test doesn't exist except for by the grace of God and by his will. And we just go on down the line that, that he's the one that spun everything into the motion and holds uh, the world in the cosmos right at the spot that it is so that we might respond to him. And so uh, God is the only one who is worthy of our worship. He's the only one that really qualifies for the, um, uh, the, the, meets the standard, if you will, of deserving our worship. And so um, we have to start with that. And that's why it's so important that we, you know, that we say that worship is focusing on responding to God because he alone is the one who is worthy. Secondly, I will say this, as we respond to God in worship, the ways that we, re that we can respond are, are fairly clear. Um, first off, it starts with what we know from the scriptures, what we read about who God is. Now, we talked about how Bible intake is, is the most important part of our spiritual discipline because it gives us that knowledge. Um, it, it helps us to have that fear, that righteous fear of who God is. And so if we truly want to worship God, we need to know who he is. And the only way that we can know who he is, is to see what creation reveals, but then also to, to, know, to have that augmented by the truth of his word that he has left for us and preserved for us these many years so that we might read and know and understand the truth. So as we're responding to God in worship, Okay? It's not just through our seeing, it's not just through a movement, but, but we worship in everything that we do because it shows that he, uh, that, his, uh, that he is the one that is receiving our attention. He's the one that we're focusing on. So it starts with the, the scripture. And so we have to do the work of understanding him, reading the word so that we would know him more. It starts with the Bible. Secondly, like we, like we said, it involves words and actions, right? That, that, the things that we do, right? The 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 um uh, the things that we say are important, you know. So if you uh, read your Bible and then you uh, try to worship God in this life and do all these things, but then out of your mouth become you come. Uh, you know, uh, foolishness and uh, coarse talking and divisiveness and, and all these other things that are not of God, you know, you're not really showing how God has changed you and how God really is worthy of the worship because you, you're, you're exhibiting that you don't actually know him. I, I, I remember, and I think I've told this story before, and, and so if I have, please forgive me, but I remember as a young man, um, uh, a Bible study teacher uh, in high school, uh, Monty was his name, uh, told me that, uh, you know, he was, he was leading us in a Bible study one Sunday morning. He was talking about how he, had, he was real thankful for God for his new shoes. And he pointed to his new shoes. He said, aren't these shoes great? You know, God really showed me where to go. And he, he recounted the story because we were like, well, look, God showed you these shoes. What do you mean God showed you these shoes? And he's like, no, no. I mean, I've been praying for shoes. My other ones were getting old. They were getting worn out. I've been praying about, you know, I needed to save enough money for them. And, you know, and, and then I found a coupon and, you know, I don't normally look for that because I've been praying about these shoes. And now the coupon came and then I went to the store and these ones were on clearance. And then I got, and he was just, I mean, he was just showing, he just told us this whole story about how God had led him to find these shoes. And, and I always remember that story because it, 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 it reminds me that that God is present not just on the cross and not just in the grave and not just holding the cosmos in order, but he's present in every facet of our lives. And so as we engage with our friendships in this world, he's there helping us. He's there uh, guiding us and lead us as he's dealing with the way that we interact with our family. Uh, he's there uh, helping and, and showing us his glory and his grace. Um, in, in the in our vocation, in our uh, in our hobbies, in in everything, he is giving, uh, he is showing us his worthiness, 
And if we are in tune with him, if we are actually paying attention to what's, what's going on and how he's leading us and we're, we're applying the word to our heart and to our lives, it's going to spill out into the things that we say and the things that we do. And so that worship then not just becomes the songs that we sing or the, the, the movements that we make while we're gathered together and it's, you know, quote unquote, worship time, but that worship becomes a way of life because we see how he's involved in every facet of our life and we respond to him in kind that we see how we're focusing on him and then as we respond to him it spills over in the words and the actions and so we're, we rightly choose the right way to act because we've known who he is and he's revealed himself to us and we're responding to it and so we don't have to know about hey should I do this or should I do that we consult what we know about him and then we make our best movement based on what he's shown us what he know what what is good and acceptable uh, to him so uh, responding to God's word uh, to, to responding to God in worship starts with the Bible starts with his word and then involves the things that we say the words that we have and the actions that we do but then also too it is the focus or it should be the focus of our heart and mind uh, it should be something that permeates everything that we do. Uh, Psalm 19 verse 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Uh, he's calling out that everything would be, you know, that everything that he does and says would spill out from what God has already shown, what God has already done. Uh, Colossians chapter three, verse 17 says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the father through him. Friends, like our heart uh, we can't live like this where we're doing everything for him and we're, we're, we're in whatever our words or deeds are unless our heart is changed. The prophet Jeremiah reminds us that the heart itself is deceitful above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things. It's desperately sick and who can understand it? But the Lord says, I, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind and give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. People say all the time that we need to just follow our heart. Friends, the only way that you should ever follow your heart, okay, is if that God is living inside of it and you are listening and responding to everything that he says. Because if you're following your own gut, your, your, only, your own best estimation of what you should or should not do, uh, you are going to fall woefully short because the heart itself is deceitful above all things. Now, the beauty is that Jesus comes and changes our heart. He changes us. Um, the word of God, it says in Hebrews chapter four, is living and active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and it pierces to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. We use the word, we respond in word and deed to God's to the scripture, to God's word, and it changes us down to the to the division of our soul and our spirit, down to our very inmost parts. Friends, that's the only way we should ever follow our heart is if our heart is fully given to God, that he has full control, he has full uh, occupancy and, and leadership of it. Because well, then we're not really following our heart, we're following God's heart. You know, that's the big difference. So worship is focusing on and responding to God because he alone is worthy. And as we respond to God, um, we start with the scripture, we start with the Bible, we, we recognize that it involves the words and actions that we do, but really it's because of the heart, of the focus of our heart and our mind, what we believe and what we know about who God is, that that's what changes the words and the actions. And the only way to, to have our heart and mind change to, to to match what God wants us to do is to uh, start with the scripture. Hey, and Matt. I, yeah, what you got, friend? I think I think that's why me and Felicia really um, supported Shelby in her decision to actually turn down a job when yeah. she does not have currently have a job because we know we know her heart and we know you know just by talking to her on a daily basis how much. Uh, she has been praying and seeking God's will and, 
you know, really wanting to follow within God's will and not her own. And she told her mom the other day that she just didn't want to get in her own way of right. what God had for her. So, you know, that's a good example, I think, off the top of my head, to, you know, for her to say that she followed her gut, you know, I think that was, you know, I told her that I think God talks to you through your gut sometimes, you know, yeah. especially when you're thinking after him the way she has been. And that's why we supported her so well in that decision. Yeah, brother. Well, and, and how easy would it have been to say, yeah, I haven't had a job offer in, you know, however long and, and school years coming up. And, and how easy would that be to say, well, this must be right. But then you hear how God is speaking to her and she listened to that, responded to it. What, what a beautiful testimony of that. And look, this next job that, that you know, this interview that she's going to have or, or, or whatever, it may or may not turn out, you know, and, and, but nonetheless, the, the glory is that she's responded to that well and that she's listened listening to the leading of God, um, you know, no matter and like any, like anything else, she still had, she still had concerns over, you know, the decision that she made, you know, well, she, yeah. and I told, and I thought I told her, I said, you don't, you don't know what God would have had for you there, or, you know, it could have been a worse situation or what I said, we'll never know the answer to the question. Right. If you would have taken that job, what would have happened or what would not have would have happened? You know, we just don't know that, but yeah, I said, you just got to follow where you think God's leading you. And if you think he's not leading you somewhere, then you have to say no. Yeah. Well, for sure. And, and Bob, I think that's, that happens too, because sometimes we, we equate worship, you know, with these powerful songs that remind us of God's glory and his greatness. And so like, we have that in my, in our, in our mind, you know, you and I have both lived. I mean, we all here on this on this uh, this this call right now have lived enough life to realize that, by golly, it's not all peaches and cream. You know what I mean? It's not all rainbows and and, and sherbet or whatever. It's, it's there's difficulty, and but but despite that, we can still worship. We can still live. And yeah, it stinks sometimes to have to say no to certain opportunities or to uh, to 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 not go forward where you feel like you want to. Your your flesh would want to but the spirit is leading i mean even paul and the the other disciples went that where he had a desire to go to rome and and to to lead them and to to teach them but god prevented him from going uh physically blocked him in in some ways so that he never got there the only way that he got there was in chains you know he never got to go to rome uh you know uh, as a missionary being able to go out amongst the city and really affect the 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 the, the, the place for christ um he had to do it in chains facing his death and you know like i don't I'm, i don't want to paint a, paint a negative nancy picture all the time but like god can really uh change uh, uh as god works right in our lives and and shows us and reveals himself to us and we respond to him sometimes it's not the best outcome for us right it, it, it sometimes it's going to cost us but we still move forward in that worship because it's what he requires it's what he is doing uh to to lead us according to his will according to his mercy and his grace and um, while it might not always be enjoyable while we're experiencing, it's always perfect for what he's doing to lead us on, on his path. Uh, friends, let me let me transition to this this next thought here, where spirit uh, worship is done in spirit and truth. Okay, and and this is kind of getting to you know what we were just talking about here about how we have to be changed. Um, uh, worship involves this change that we go through, where God, um, where our heart is no longer uh, in control um, and our own desires, but instead God is leading us, and His desires become our desires. And so when when Jesus uh, in John chapter four spoke to that Samaritan woman there by the well. And she started bringing up, Hey, well, we worship on the mountain, but then, you know, uh, you guys say you can only worship there at the temple. And, you know, they were, she was starting this religious debate that they'd been having for, for hundreds of years. Right. Jesus cuts down to the bottom of it, says, listen, this is not, look, we worship, we worship in the spirit and in the truth. And what we, what I, what I hope that we take away from, from something like that is to realize that when we worship God in spirit, that's us being changed from the inside out. 
that's that's having things that happen uh, to us in in those those gut feelings that we get from the Holy Spirit that changes. That if if you were going to ask any modern uh, or, or or common sense kind of idea about what would be best, that it's not always going to match that. But still, it's it's pure and it's perfect because it's God's leading. And and as we spend times. Uh, worshiping God, um, uh, reading his word, responding to who he, who he is, filling uh, his truth uh, in, in our heart, that we're going to see change happening us from the inside out, that the what we believe and the faith that we have is going to spill over into our actions. And then the, the worship in, that's done in spirit and truth, the truth part, to worship truth is for, uh, to worship God in truth is to worship from the outside in. And, and what I mean by that is that in the same way that the spirit comes in and reveals uh, the truth of who he is, how, how uh, remember what we read a, a few, a few weeks ago about how um, Jesus you know, said that, you know, the Holy Spirit was going to come and live us and live in us and that our minds would be open to understanding the truth of the gospel. Uh, so, so that's what happens the change from the spirit uh, with the worshiping his spirit from the inside out. But then we also change in worship from the outside in, where we um, uh, the things that we put into our lives, the things that we put into uh, our experience, the, the, the scripture that we read, um, the people that we listen to that give us encouragement and teach us uh, truths, um, that they, you know, we, we, we apply that and, and as from the outside in and then the inside out, as those kind of mingle there, um, the, the, the inside out is always going to take priority to change what's happening in, from the outside in. But as we fill ourselves with um, the, the, the good things of God, then, then it's, we're going to see how that makes us learn. You know, one way that I live this out in my life is, um, you know, if you've ever been somewhere with, with me, like we've gone to a, a maybe a, a, a Christian uh, service or another church or something like that, or a, a, a meeting where they're going to they're gonna have Bible study and they usually have prayer, uh, they have uh, worship. If I've never heard the song before and I don't know those words, I don't sing along, even if they give me a handout, right? Uh, maybe I'll read through them first, but I recognize that what I say with my mouth is an endorsement that I'm making. Right. And so when I sing to God, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, I'm singing of his amazing grace. And I agree with all of that to be true. Now, if I come across a song that I don't know and that I've never heard before, I will not listen. I will not sing it out loud until I hear the words all the way through and know that I agree with that. Because even sometimes there's songs that, you know, maybe uh, I, I don't agree with them theologically. I mean, there's there's all kinds of different traditions out there that will have songs and, and we might appropriate them uh, for our context. It's it's a thing that I don't I don't like to do because I, I just, I want to make sure that what I'm saying, okay, even if I'm in a Christian concert, Christian worship service, whatever it is, if, if, even if it's a song that I, I, uh, I don't know, I don't want to sing it because I don't want from the outside in to influence wrongly, right? Because some people can be wrong theologically. Some people can, can, can make, make, uh, make a statement that might not be true. You know, sometimes, uh, songwriters, uh, musicians will try to take a concept from God, try to take a concept from scripture and they try to make it poetic, you know, a little bit, but as they make it poetic, it changes the meaning a little bit in my opinion. And so I don't want to, I don't want to tempt myself to learn something wrongly. Um, and so I'll, I'll, I, that's, that's something I do, right? So if you ever, if you ever, you're hanging, ever hang out with me and we're at a revival service or whatever, that's the reason I'm doing it. That I'm, you know, it's not just because I don't like singing. It's because I'm, I'm waiting to, to try to see what the, the truth of that song is and, and, and really uh, doing that. Uh, Derek Webb, uh, you can search this song uh, on the internet and, and there's, there's something that he did where he started singing a song um, and he's a popular uh, worship band, band leader. He was part of the, the group called Cayman's Call back in the 90s, if you know who those people are. Um, but um, he put out a song a, a few years ago 
and it's just singing about the 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 way that we love and the way that we enjoy and how we put it in us and and how we feel it moving and and I was listening to it and I was like, there's just something wrong with this song. It just doesn't seem right, you know? And I, it was funny because I was watching some of the comments on it where people were, were, were writing, like I was watching a YouTube video of it and people were responding and saying, hey, this is a great song. I love this. It's got such a sweet melody, blah, blah, all these different things. And then we get to the final chorus, right? And we find out that he's been, he wrote this song on purpose this way and he sang the song about alcohol right? Uh, and I kind of ruined it for you because you'll know, but if you go and search it, but he sings the song about alcohol and saying how alcohol is good. And so some of the things of the way that we would worship God and the way that we would minister God, he appropriated those and put them into context. So as you went back and you listened to the rest of the song, the things that we talk about, how we start burning with passion sometimes, like that's how it happens with alcohol, right? I mean, there's, 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 there's there, there was these, these connections that he was making and he's not saying that our alcohol is bad. That's not what he's, he's, he was trying to make the point that if we're not careful, the things that we say what we put from the outside in can start to affect us and we don't know that we're actually getting into trouble if we're not responding to it well like we were talking about earlier where we're living in the word where we're noticing what our heart and our soul is is responding to if we're not you know gauging or, or uh, uh, putting together what we're putting from the outside in uh, and letting the inside out be the one that you know, really is, is the driving force on that. And so uh, friends, that's what I mean by we need to worship from the spirit and truth where we both, where it happens both from the inside out and the outside in, but it's the inside out that is the most important. Okay. That, that what the spirit is showing us, what we're learning from the word that right there is what's going to dictate and, and really control the way that we respond to how those outside things come. Um, next, we, we see that worship is expected, okay? It's expected of those who follow God, that worship should happen, right? That your heart should focus on God and should respond to him. If you can go a whole day and you think, you, 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 you get to the, you lay your head on the, on the pillow and you're like, you know what? I didn't think one time about God today. I didn't respond to him. Uh, friends, that's that's a rough day that you probably had. That's that's not a that's not a fun day that you you probably enjoyed. Uh, there was I'm sure some difficulty in there, and, and really not a not a great way to experience a day. Um, that worship is expected. It's expected both publicly, and it's both uh, expected uh, privately. That we should be doing it with other people, so that we would understand and that we would be able to grow together. That we would be able to um, to uh, encourage each other. Uh, in those ways. And then it's pri worship happens privately as well, that we tune our hearts to God so that he would be our focus and that he would be our, uh, our uh, he would be the receiver of our in attention. So worship happens publicly in groups like church services and with fellow believers, uh, with your family together, uh, you know, as, as you should join together, worshiping God um, in all ways. Uh, and, and that's what helps build builds that width of, of our of our understanding and our knowledge of who God is but then it's the private worship that we do that builds the depth okay it's the private worship where we respond to the spirit on our own and he's teaching us we need both of it we need the the public that that stretches us wide and we need the private that makes us deep okay now listen the the private can give us width sometimes and the public can give us depth I'm not trying to say only this is what it is I'm just trying to paint that picture we need both ways so that we really become a complete disciple in him. Uh, the scripture uh, tells us that uh, we should not neglect to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another as all, uh, all the more as you see the, dra the day of the Lord drawing near, right? So that we should not neglect to worshiping together because it brings us together because in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we're reminded that the body is one, that we are of one body, but it has many members. And the members of the body, though many, are one body. So it is with Christ. So listen, anybody that's ever had a sprained ankle, right? You think, 
oh man, it's just a sprained ankle. It shouldn't hurt the rest of me, right? But no, like when, a, when you have a sprained ankle, that's, it, it affects the way the rest of your body is, right? Like all of a sudden you, you, ever, you ever stub the toe and all of a sudden you can't see straight anymore because the pain is just so excruciating. Like that's in the same way. The body of Christ comes together and, and builds each other up and, and reflects the glory of God. But, but it does that best when each of the individual members of the body have been growing in, uh, on their own and strengthening themselves on their own so that when they come together, they're all the more built up. They're all the more uh, finding strength. And so, uh, friends, it, we need to have both sides of that coin. We need to be able to do uh, to 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 uh, to both have the public and the private, so that we grow, and so that the body of Christ can grow. Because by making ourselves strong, when we come together, we help other people be strong. Okay. And then lastly, this is what I want us to kind of spend just these last few moments talking about. Worship is a discipline to be cultivated, okay? It is an exercise to do. It is a program to enact. It is a, a, uh, it is a, uh, a script to follow in some instances. We have to put in the work to, do, to learn how to worship, okay? It requires discipline. Like, We've talked about how worship is the focusing on and responding to God, okay? And that is very true, but it requires discipline on our part because it is so easy to go through the day and realize I didn't think about God once today. I mean, listen, that has happened in my life in, in, in the last month where everything else was just so hectic and crazy. And I feel like I didn't even spend one. And maybe even I did things for church, right? Things that involve maybe preparing for a Bible study or getting something ready or whatever it is. But I really wasn't focusing on God. I was focusing on the task at hand right? Even that can be something that happens in our lives. And so it requires discipline. If you do not intentionally set your heart and set your mind to, uh, for your words and your actions to display the glory of God, focusing on him, responding to him, then you won't do it. That you, you, say, you say that you want to worship God and you, you can in every and all situations, then you need to purpose in your heart and say, okay, I'm dropping my kids off at school today. I'm going to, how can I worship the, the father? How can I worship God as I drive my little kiddos to school and get them ready and prepare them? I'm going to go sit in this meeting today uh, at work and we're going to talk about all kinds of sales numbers and projections and all those things. I want to worship God in that, that I, that I would honor him and I would focus on him even in the midst of the distraction of the vocation that I have. If you, I mean, it's possible to do that, right? And if it's possible to do that, the only way really that you're going to be successful is if you set yourself aside. Maybe there's a task, a project that you have around the house or maybe at your job that you need to do. How can I glorify God? How can I focus on him and, and, and notice what he is? And in the same way that Monty, my old Bible study leader, uh, youth leader back uh, in uh, Cherokee Hills Baptist Church in Ardmore, Oklahoma, um, you know, told us about how he purposed to find shoes and worship God finding shoes. We can do that with just about anything and everything that happens in our lives, okay? But it requires that dis discipline and that intentionality that if you, you know, the old adage, right? If you don't, you don't, you, you don't uh, uh, set out the plan, uh, a failure to plan is a plan to fail, I think is the way that, it's, that, that most people say it. In the same way, if you don't, intentionally set out to include worship as the part as as an integral part of your life then you're going to gloss over it and and your attention is going to go to other things to the urgency of the now and so it requires discipline you setting aside no i'm going to do this okay worship is a discipline that's cultivated and it the the book says it says it like this that it's covered in heart prints and i, I thought that was a kind of a fun word and so i i, I the, the idea of the uh you know how you know how a, 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 a kid will uh, take a, a stamp or, or stickers and decorate their folder for school or whatever, and, it, and they'll make it unique, or maybe they'll doodle and draw all over it to make it their own, right? That this is, this is um, my folder is set apart from everybody else's folder because I made it look like this and, and, and you know, has my own personality or whatever. 
in the same way, God puts imprints of his heart on those that are following him, that when we trust in him, we respond to him, that when we focus on him, we, we learn to, to, to uh, acknowledge him in everything. We imitate his son and we're filled with his spirit, that he covers us with his heart prints so that we reflect the glory of God, so that the way that he responds to the widow and the orphan becomes the way that we should respond. The way that he sees those that are oppressed and beaten and broken, we should see them too because that's been imprinted on us. And the way that he is merciful is the way that we're merciful. The way that he loves without condition is the way that we should love without condition. That's what it means to be covered in the heart prints of God. And friends, that starts with you knowing the character of God that so that you know the, the character that he has so that your character can change and be modeled like his. And then lastly, worship is both an end and a means, okay? It's both an end and a means. So it is something physically that we do, something actually that we do, that we set aside time to worship him. Now it comes across most often in church life where that happens through a song and, and things like that, right? Through a worship service where we're actively engaging. Now that's a good thing and that's a great end, but also too, it can be like my, my old youth minister, youth leader, Monty, that he intended it to be the end, right? That he was going to worship God through the purchasing of those shoes, right? So you can do it not just in the worship service, but it's it's the thing like like I've I've got this task to do. I'm going to give God glory throughout all of it. It's all going to be for him. It's all focused on him. And then you go about doing that. OK, but also it's the means by which we learn and grow as disciples. It's the re, it's the way that we increase our discipline, our spiritual disciplines in the Lord. That as we worship God, as we focus on him, and as we respond to him, we're going to hunger for his word. We're going to thirst for his knowledge. And so we're going to read the Bible more. As we worship God, focusing on him and responding to who he is, we're going to want to communicate with him. We're going to want to pray and pour out our hearts and pour out our souls to him. And it's going to make us better prayers. It's going to make us better scripture readers and memorizers because we want to build up those disciplines. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause us to hunger and thirst for his righteousness. And so we will fast because of it. Because we're worshiping God, we're focusing on him, we're responding to who he is and what he's doing in this life, we're going to say, we're going to set aside time to fast so that we might focus on him and have that ability. It's going to teach that discipline in us. You see, Bible uh, intake, reading the Bible, putting it into our hearts, that's the most important thing. That's the, that's the, the foundation that builds all the, other, uh, all the other disciplines build on. But it's the worship that we do, the worship of God that carries us along and is often the shuttle that gets us to that destination. It's, it's, it's the thing that, that pushes us there. It's, it's the wind in our sails maybe, maybe is a better, is a better uh, analogy there that, that, will, that will help us achieve. Um, it's, it's the means to achieve a spiritual growth in the individual disciplines. It's both the end, something that we do, something that we partake in, but it's also the means by which we grow as followers of Christ. We want to know God and imitate his son, be filled with his spirit so we might serve the kingdom. It comes down to, are we worshiping God? Not in that are you singing songs about him, not in are you writing great sonnets or whatever else about his glory. Although you can do those things and you should do those things, but it's more than that. It's worship is focusing on who he is and then responding to what he is doing and what he's revealed. And friends, that's what it really means to worship him. It shows up in song, it shows up in dance sometimes, it, but it also shows up in the way that we actually just live our lives and become more and more like him. So let me encourage you, as you think about how you're gonna grow in the Lord, that you include worship, intentional, a disciplined, I'm going to 
make this all about him, focusing on God. I'm not just reading the Bible just because I, my pastor told me to or because I feel guilty that I haven't. I'm going to do it because I want to focus on his glory. He's the only one that's worthy of my attention. And so I want to respond to that. You know, that's the, that's what, that's what should drive us in these spiritual disciplines. So that's what worship is friends. And I hope that we can, uh, we can apply worship to all of our hearts and all of our lives so that we might, uh, know God fully, that we might imitate him, his son. We might be filled with his spirit so that we're ready to serve his kingdom, uh, wherever he lead, uh, wherever he takes us. All right. Friends, that's all I've got for us tonight. Is there any questions, uh, additions, comments? Hey, Matt. Yeah, what you got, brother? Uh, would you ask everybody that's logged in here if they got their email? Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I know Bob and Aaron have. Kelly, uh, I was going to mention that. We sent an email out kind of about the um, what, what we're going to – our process going forward about how we kind of want to get back to normal. Did you see that? I did see that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, listen, I, I just, I want to encourage you to, to, to know that that's what's happening. And, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on that. If you're able to make it, um, on, uh, on Sunday morning early, uh, for that, I know it's a quick turnaround or it feels like a quick turnaround. Um, but you know, we want to know, we want everyone to know that like th there's grace in that we understand that there's all kinds of different folks where, where the level of comfortableness with, with where they are and, and making a good decision about how they're going to uh, take care of themselves and their family. We, we want to, you know, we want everybody to do those things and we trust that God is, is leading them just as much as they're leading the next person. Um, but we, we feel like we want to start making these steps to, to get back to a little bit of a, of a regular or maybe normal. Um, um, but we want, uh, we want folks to, we're going to try everything we do to, to accommodate all those different things. Uh, friend, if you've got any questions about it, uh, just of course, give us a call, text, whatever, whatever we can do. We, we'd love to, to talk with you more about it. Okay. You got it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, friends, I, I love all you guys and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, just just continuing to serve God together as, as we grow as a church and uh, as we respond to how he's leading us. Uh, let me pray for us as we go and uh, you guys be encouraged to enjoy these last few moments of the sunshine before uh, before it goes down and then and just uh, remember to, to give glory to God in all that we say and do. OK, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the. Um, Lord, we thank you for the, the fact that you alone are worthy of our praise. There's nothing else in this world that as good as it could be, as wonderful as, as your creation is, it falls woefully show, short of your majesty, of your glory, of your grace. Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to have hearts that would be tuned to you and that we would see your working in everything that we do, and that we would respond with a focus of attention to you and you alone. Lord, that we would see our lives as, as, as a way to live out uh, on this earth in everything that we do from our families to our jobs, as all of those things would be uh, a way to worship you, that we could worship you through the, the big milestones that we, we find ourselves in. And even in the mundane, you know, just happenings of life, Lord, I, I pray that, that we would find ways to worship you and that we would put you first, that we, our focus would be on who you are um, and, 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 and how you love us and how you've changed us. I, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to change from that inside out, so that we would be changed by your spirit and focused on him uh, and focused on you, but then also, too, that the things that come from the outside, uh, that you would send us good things to help us change, and we would we would be able to, to discern what's pure and what's holy and what's acceptable in your eyes. I pray, Lord, that we would be strong disciples, not for our own glory, not for our own good, but for your kingdom's sake, Lord, that we might be able to serve you well. I pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen.
All right. Well, hey, listen, I, I love you guys, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you guys again very, very soon. And um, uh, I, I promise that I will not wave at the end of this because I feel like I wave every time, and I'm going to be like a regular person just says goodbye, okay? So no, no saluting either then. <laughs> no, no saluting. No, we're just, <laughs> just regular old uh, goodbyes, and, and, I, and I love you. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. All right. Good night, y'all. We'll see you later. Good night.